Hi, I'm Angela Dorikas Taylor, and the story I'm reading is Lunch with the Mayor. I've had a lot of jobs and a lot of bosses. Raised in Angelina's restaurant in a family of bosses, I learned how to set a table before I knew my ABCs. Waitress mom, uncle bartender, and the real boss, grandmother proprietress, who sat at the family table keeping an eye on everything. Gloria, that's my mom. What is she saying talking about me? Get her away from the customers she, before she tells them all my business. Angela, come here. Don't worry, Mommy. I won't tell Father Fitzgerald you say F-U-C-K. <laughs> I wasn't fired that night, but I was often escorted by my HR mom to the ladies' room for a spanking. I, I mean coaching session. I graduated from Hofstra with my Bachelor of Arts degree and I got a job as a cater waiter on a charter yacht, doing parties in New York Harbor. By the end of the summer, I was prep chef for Jimmy Buffett's sister, Lucy. Chef Lulu used to call me sissy, as in, hey sissy, you ain't done peeling them shrimp yet? She was a delightful boss, but really, it's nearly impossible to be anything but when your work entails being out on the water looking out at a sunset behind the Statue of Liberty. When Chef Lulu departed to open her restaurants, I took over the galley, cooking and running parties for people like Madonna. I had to sign a non-disclosure, so I can't tell you any more about that. In the winters, I was cooking on board for long-term charters in the Caribbean. And off-season, I worked as delivery crew, transporting people's yachts from one destination to another. It was on a transatlantic delivery of a sailboat from Antigua to Southampton, England, in a storm with 25-foot seas that I found my relationship with the big boss. Then I turned 30. I was in Puerto Rico. I lived nowhere, owned nothing, and had no idea what I was going to be when I grew up. I heard about this El Conquistador resort being built on a 300-foot bluff at the corner of the island of Puerto Rico where the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea converged. My boss was an amazing woman. She hired me as a meetings and convention service manager, despite my lack of hotel experience nor a college degree in hospitality. She gave me a career. After Puerto Rico came the Fairmont Hotel in Chicago, that boss told me to keep the passion, but lose the emotion, which was good advice. And then came the Waldorf Astoria. I was director of events, the boss, directly managing my team of 12 and indirectly managing 600 housekeepers, bellmen, concierge, front desk agents, meetings, banquet staff, in service to our guests, who included people like the President of the United States, the Dalai Lama, Sting, during the Waldorf years, I got married and gave birth to two new bosses, I mean sons. Life-changing. One day, I kept Secret Service waiting to do a walkthrough of the presidential suite because I was on the phone, mediating an argument between my husband and my five-year-old. I realized I needed to be home, so I quit. Just like that, I was a full-time suburban mom. While not working, I became a serial volunteer, PTA, League of Women Voters, You Get at Children's Library, and of course, I had to be chair of their 10th anniversary gala. And as president of the board, I had to support the event, bidding on several silent auction items, including lunch with the mayor. I got into a bidding war with a local developer and it really pissed me off. I mean, surely he had had lunch with the mayor. What was my winning bid? Well, let's just say it was enough for a nice dinner of six at Morton's, but it was for a good cause, a children's library, which is what I told my husband as I signed the check. During my lunch, my lunch with the mayor, my hospitality career came up, and before I knew it, I was volunteering on his campaign, organizing house parties throughout the city, intimate coffee and conversations in people's home, homes. It was fun, but after three years of not bringing in an income, I needed to go back to work. I called the mayor to break the news that I would no longer be able to help him with the house parties. 
What will you do, he asked. Find a hotel job. It's a bummer. I'll have to commute to the city again and get child care, but I need to go to work. And then he offered me a job as his executive assistant. You're overqualified, he said, and the pay is probably not what you're used to, but I stopped him. Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30? No nights, weekends, or holidays, no overnight duty, five minutes from my home with my kids? I've never had a job like that in my life. That was 15 and a half years ago. So what's my boss like? He's a good man. I wouldn't have stayed in the job this long if he wasn't. Please don't believe everything you may hear. He treats me, and everyone in fact, with dignity and respect, whether they deserve it or not. But for the record, he's not really my boss. My bosses are the residents of New Rochelle, the taxpayers who call me up to complain and remind me that they pay my salary. And that's okay, it's true. It's my job to listen and try and resolve their issues. But they are really the worst bosses I've ever had. Not all, but many think it's okay to be rude and condescending, talking to me like I'm a moron, sometimes screaming profanities. It's during those calls that I have to remember to keep the passion and lose the emotion. So I take a deep breath, because I'm a yogi, and I look up to the big boss, and I ask for the strength not to channel my waitress mother and just tell them to F-U-C-K off.